Good morning, everyone. Yes, I've got that cold. <laughs> ah, not such a big deal. Uh, still need to do what I need to do. And let's get going right away so that as long as my voice actually works. <laughs> I know. You're sick. Are you laughing? Uh, I saw this cute little clip of a mom. There's a high, uh, high chair. And the baby's in the front. And it's sitting in the high chair eating. And mom's behind. And there's some music on. And she's... Yeah, and the mom's dancing behind, and the boy sees her, I guess, and the and the, like while she's you know filming it, and the boy starts going, and, and it's a, a friendly reminder uh, that your energy does affect your surroundings. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll start with that, and I will get going in Esther, and we're in the book of Esther three. It's very early, it's still dark outside, but I feel like I need to do all this now. <laughs> I said by my voice is still. Yes, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. All right. <coughs> <coughs> Book of Esther 3. Shortly afterwards, King Ahasuerus singled out Haman, son of Hama, Hamedata, a native of Agog, for promotion. He raised him in rank, granting him precedence over all his colleagues, the other officers of state and all the royal officials employed at the chancellery using to, used to bow low and prostrate themselves whenever Haman appeared. Such was the king's command. Now, who is Haman? Doesn't really tell us. Mordecai refused either to bow or to prostrate himself. Why do you flout the royal command? The officials of the chancellery asked Mordecai. Day after day, uh, they asked him this, but he took no notice of them. In the end, they reported the matter to Haman to see whether Mordecai would persist in his attitude, since he had told them that he was a Jew. Haman could see for himself that Mordecai did not bow or prostrate himself in his presence. He became furiously angry, and on being told what race Mordecai belonged to, he thought it beneath him merely to get rid of Mordecai but made up his mind to wipe out all the members of Mordecai's race, the Jews living in Ahasuerus' entire empire. What a weird one. So, what? He... It was beneath him merrily to get rid of Mordecai. He was going to kill all the Jews. Now, why would Mordecai do that? These are all people in the palace, right? So he tells Esther, who, okay, was adopted by him, but no doubt adopted by whom? Other Jews. And he goes and Mordecai tells these officials that he's a Jew. Well, then aren't they going to figure out that Esther is a Jew too? I just ask, this is weird. Why does he tell her that? Okay. Is, isn't Mordecai now putting Esther in danger? You know what? I don't know. Now we're getting into, that was the first part of three. Now we're getting into the third super chapter, the Jews in peril. The decree of extermination against the Jews. My goodness. That started early, didn't it? Well, in the first month, that is the month of Nisan, of the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, the poor, that is, the lot, was cast in Haman's presence to determine the day and the month, the lot falling on the twelfth month, which is Adar. Haman said to King Ahasuerus, There is a certain unassimilated nation scattered among the other nations throughout the provinces of your realm. Their laws are different from those of all the other nations, 
and the royal laws they ignore. Hence, it is not in the king's interest to tolerate them. If their destruction be signed, so please the king. I am ready to pay 10,000 talents of silver to the king's receivers to be credited to the royal treasury. Oh, bribing the king. <laughs> wow. The king then took his signet ring off his hand and gave it to Haman, son of Hamedata, the persecutor of the Jews. Keep the money, he said, and you can have the people too. Do what you like with them. Oh my gosh. The royal scribes were therefore summoned for the 13th day of the first month when they wrote out the orders addressed by Haman to the king's satraps to the governors ruling each province and to the principal officials of each people, to each province in its own script and to each people in its own language. The edict was signed in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed with his ring, and letters were sent by runners to every province of the realm ordering the destruction, slaughter, and annihilation of all Jews, young and old, including women and children, on the same day, the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is Adar, and the seizing of their possessions. The text of the letter was as follows. Oh, now we're in italics here, which means that this, this is actually, there's actual records of this. <coughs> I, uh, you know, reading this, of course, huh? well, Okay, I didn't. I wasn't born yet during World War Two, but <clears throat> who doesn't know the stories about World War Two, where the Jews also were annihilated, you know, a lot of them, and it seems such a thing that seems to concentrate on the Jews, but that's not true. If when we think back, okay. I, if you read history, world history, in just about every country's uh, history, there is a, a persecution of a people. And the solution, just again, right, because somebody didn't get bowed to, decide that, well, let's get rid of them. It, it's not a strategic, you know, political or or whatever move in which none of it is right. This is just the hurt feelings of one person that started this. Unbelievable. <coughs> <coughs> if Mordecai would have known ahead of time what that could cost well, he was being steadfast and not, okay. Well, then why did he conceal Esther's identity or told her, don't, I'm not getting it. Then he's just telling people anyway. I'm not, what is that? <laughs> Selfish, in a way, both Mordecai and Haman selfish reasons for what they're doing yeah. yes well anyway the great king Ahasuerus to the governors of the 127 provinces stretching from India to Ethiopia unto their sub subordinate district commissioners being placed in authority over many nations and ruling the whole world I have resolved never to be carried away by the insolence of power but always to rule with moderation and clemency so as to assure for my subjects a life ever free from storms. Well, is this the precursor of, oh jeez. <laughs> and offering my kingdom the benefits of civilization and free transit from end to end to restore that peace which all men desire in consultation with our advisors as to how this aim is to be effected 
we have been informed by one of them eminent among us for prudence and well proved for his unfailing devotion and unshakable trustworthiness and in rank second only to our majesty Haman by name that there is mingled among all the tribes of the earth a certain ill-disposed people opposed by its laws to every other nation and continually defying the royal ordinances in such a way as to obstruct that form of government assured by us to the general good <laughs> considering therefore that this people unique of its kind is in complete opposition to all humanity from which it differs by its outlandish laws that it is hostile to our interests and that it commits the most heinous crimes to the point of endangering the stability of the realm Unbelievable. People just went for that? Man, I'll tell you what. I guess the word hypocrisy came into being here or something. We command that those persons designated to you in the letters written by Haman, who was appointed to watch over our interests and is a second father to us, be all destroyed, root and branch, including women and children, by the swords of their enemies, without any pity or mercy, on the fourteenth day of the twelfth month, Adar of the present year, so that these past and present malcontents being in one day forcibly thrown down to Hades, our government may be henceforward enjoy personal stability and peace. Women and children, too? God Almighty, what does human life mean? What does human life mean today? Copies of this decree to be okay. That was the end of the italic So I guess this letter exists because they said that um, Things in italic actually had There was a record of that Now we're back into the story copies of this decree to be promulgated as law as law in each province were published to the various people so that each might be ready for the day aforementioned at the king's command the runners set out with all speed the decree was first promulgated in the citadel of susa while the king and haman gave themselves up to feasting and drinking consternation reigned in the city of susa that's the end of three hey uh, yeah Ugh. oh oh but we also read that the slaughter the massacres were fictitious okay Oh, but then whatever is written in italics. Okay, you know what? Lost again here. It uh, seems so. Oh, uh, all right. I guess Esther will eventually have her turn. Uh. Oh, I don't have don't have much more to say than that. It's just sad. It's all sad. I uh, saw a few. Uh, I woke up early. Yes, I had plenty of sleep, but I couldn't sleep anymore. I woke up early and, and uh, watched a few little clips, and uh, I really liked the little clips, or some of them, not all of them. Uh, on Facebook, the little videos that you can go through, and uh, it's just, I love the ones with especially the children, the animals. Well, the good ones. I like the good ones. <laughs> and, uh, there were several several of the, of that horse farm that rescues horses and most of them are work horses or a lot of them are the ones I've seen were work horses that had done their work and then there was one that big John and a huge horse it looks like a Belgian or something and uh, he had been injured and old and and was going to be slaughtered for you know, get on the meat wagon. That's a yeah. Who knows where there is horse meat all in our food? I mean, just saying. But anyway, um, 
and they rescued him, and now he gets to live out his old age uh, in a nice place. There are other ones. Yeah. Again, uh, one was uh, a cart horse. Yeah. Also got too old, couldn't work anymore, couldn't probably pull the load anymore. And same thing, and the owners just get rid of them. And I find that so sad. If, if one still chooses to uh, use animals for work, then there should be a retire retirement program uh, for these horses as well. Uh, and uh, even if um, you know, the people have businesses with horses, then don't have a place for a horse to you know, live its life out, per se, then they should at least make arrangements um, to have it somewhere, uh, to give it to someone and then just donate every month or a little something. Okay, just so. Find it so sad. Find that so sad that um, people do that. Yeah. Expendable. And, and, and they're not useful anymore. And I've said this before, I've made so many videos in the barn that our horses they care about the food do they really care so much about me you know uh, they do but i don't our horses are pretty wild uh wild they get to go out every day just about um uh, to roam 150 200 uh, 225 acres the 150 is the initial part and then there's little parcels attached to it and they love it but they stayed domesticated, okay? Uh, you can still write them and all that. But they're just a joy. They're just a joy. The little donkey we have that we also rescued. Uh, just a joy. Absolute joy. And if horses are kept uh, in a clean environment, and... and uh, in a clean and healthy environment, then uh, they, they're not that expensive to keep. Well, anyway, but to see uh, this farm that has all these horses rescued from the meat wagon uh, is, is uh, it's wonderful to see. Yeah. Yes, it, we rescued many animals as well, not just horses. <clears throat> When I think of the story of Esther here now in the book of Esther, where it sounds like, uh, okay, the massacres are fictitious, so they didn't happen, but someone wrote this down for what then? Uh, yes. I think that one of the things that should give us pause is all throughout what we've read and it's either one side that is creating a massacre or the other side and it, the Jews aren't always the ones that, that are being hunted down this and that. they're doing the hunting as well so both sides are doing it's just oh it's the Jews turn again now right? you know what I mean and uh I can't see an end to any of it till one side just says no we're not doing that anymore we're just gonna be the hunted ones right? we'll try to survive that should be more important than uh, to retaliate always in the same way <coughs> I don't know what goes through a person's mind when they kill a child uh, regardless of who the child is. How is that possible? Which brings me to spiritual growth again. I guess that's an important part in our lives if we want to uh, get out of the conflict of people fighting against each other. I don't know. It seems to be part of it. And spiritual growth at that time in the Bible just wasn't 
I don't know, wasn't practiced, wasn't really something one understood yet. So it's okay, as long as your family's okay, if it's okay to annihilate other families. Like, weird? How? Well, I can't that. I don't know. Anyway, my brain's a little fogged up with my nose all clogged up and uh, so I'm not quite running on a hundred percent. So we'll keep this short. Yes, we'll see what else comes up in the book of Esther. Uh, we'll have all the children here. We can all be sick together. The younger two, my grandson and my granddaughter, younger granddaughter, they didn't get it yet. So I'm gonna make sure. Okay, not not too much hugging today. Let's see. Rich tells me to have a good immune system too. That's a good thing to know. Yes. I'm so isolated on the farm. Um, we have visitors, but uh, that I don't ever hardly ever get sick at the farm. Um, yeah, I did get COVID at the farm because Sissy brought it home with her from school. But I sailed through that one pretty good. Then I was here at Christmas and picked something up and recuperated at my son's. And then now, uh, six months later, I got this cold. Yeah. Yeah, I get around people, and then uh, whatever they got, right? yes, I, I kind of get too. It's good, it's good. My immune system needs to <laughs> be activated a little bit, right? Yes. Okay, that's all I have to share this morning. I hope you all have a wonderful day. May Heavenly Father bless and protect you. Right? And embrace you with love, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.